Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of Batch Traceability 360. It's a plugin for SAP Business One and Computech Process Force and it helps you track the entire life cycle of your batches. So the Batch Traceability 360 plugin communicates with the SAP Business One database via Computech App Engine. So to use it you'll have to enable Computech App Engine first. To do that, you should open up SAP Business One. You need to have the Computech Process Force extension installed, and then you go to Settings, which looks like this. You go to the Process Force tab, and then EE, which stands for App Engine, and then check the Enable App Engine box. You restart SAP Business One, and you'll be ready to go. There are a few starting points from which you can get to Batch Traceability 360. The first is the Computech App Engine Launchpad, which looks just like this. Or you can use the module menu in SAP Business One by following this path. Inventory, Item Management, Batches, Batch Traceability 360. Or you can also use the context menu on a couple of the Process Force forms. One of them is the Complaint form. Here you have to be in the Transaction tab and right click and Batch Traceability will appear on the context menu. Or the other form is batch master data, you just right click anywhere on the form and again batch traceability will be right there. So now we've got batch traceability 360 up on our screen and you can see we have a big list of all our batches which we could look through as it is and we could choose a batch from there but it's probably going to be easier and much more useful to filter this list. So you can type either the batch number you're looking for or part of the batch number in this box and it will narrow the search down. Or you can, for example, type default and it will bring up all batches which are default revisions. You can also customise the filters which are displayed at the top by clicking on adapt filters. And if you select the check boxes, you can choose any of these filtering fields to appear. And that will allow you to use multiple filter criteria to find those batches that you need to know more about. So let's say I'm interested in batches of a particular product that have recently reached their expiry date and might still be in my inventory. I'll type the name of the product in the item name box, choose a date range for expiry date, and as you can see, I can relax. I don't have any batches like that in my inventory. So after we've found the batch we want, there are three main areas of Batch Traceability 360. The overview, trace, and action. When you select a batch, you'll be taken to the overview by default. So let's start there. In the overview, we have a summary of lots of different activities related to our batch. So we can see how many complaints are associated with the batch, how many customers were sold the batch, how many deliveries were made containing the batch, then we have returns, AR credit notes, products affected by the batch, inventory and production orders. And if we click on any of these panels, we get a bit more detail. I won't go through them all, but let's take a closer look at a few of them to give you the gist. Let's take a look at complaints first. We've got three lines here, and each of those lines represents a batch of final product that the customer has complained about. Our base batch is a component of all of those final goods batches, so we have all three displayed, but there was just a single complaint document, so you can see that the complaint number is the same each time. We have some information here about the customer, the date of the complaint, the product number and the batch number of the final goods batch here too. You can also see on the right here that we have a graph and this graph shows us the reason for the complaint. In this case, you can see that for all of the three problematic batches, the customer complained that it was both wet and incorrectly labelled. And by clicking on each of these panels on the overview, you'll find expanded relevant data in each instance. If we look at customers, we'll see a list of all the customers we sold the batch to, which is incredibly handy if you have to do a recall. Um, here you also have a map so you can see where those customers are located or that same information can also be displayed in a bar chart. 
if we went into deliveries, we'd be able to see all the deliveries which this batch formed part of and a map of all the delivery locations where the batch was sent. Actually, we can just take a quick look at production orders. Here we have a list of every production order that the batch was involved in in any way. And that means not just the production order that the batch was used in, but also production orders earlier in the batch's life cycle which resulted in the manufacture of our base batch. You've probably noticed those golden arrows to the left of the entries on the tables. If you've opened Batch Traceability 360 from SAP Business One, you can click on those arrows and it will bring up the corresponding document or form in SAP Business One. So clicking on the arrow next to production order number will bring up the manufacturing order in SAP Business One. Or clicking on the product code will bring up the bill of materials and so on and so forth. And now we'll move on to Trace. So here we have this visualization of the life cycle of our batch. Our base batch, that is the batch that we're currently querying, is highlighted in red here on the left. And the blue boxes are things that we have manufactured. So that's all of the semi-final and then final goods that the batch was used in. So our base batch here is actually a raw material which we have bought in and if it were not our base batch it would be orange because that's the colour code that represents purchased inventory and also inactive inventory is represented in grey on this graph. On the right of the screen you can see a key. This will help you navigate this a bit. If you press shift and then use the left mouse button to click that will change the base batch to whichever one you click on. Then let's just try that now. So now that visualization is centered around this new batch here, you can see that we now have our purchased goods in orange and manufactured goods in blue. Now let's say we just want to look at the batches related to another batch on this screen. Well, then we just can hold down control and click the left mouse button and that will be highlighted like this. And in this way, we can trace and analyze our inventory really, really easily. So if we find out from our supplier that a batch that we got from them is somehow defective, we just click on the item on our graph and everywhere it was used will be highlighted for us. Or in reverse, maybe we discover during quality control that something's not quite right. We can use this graph to help us track down the source of the problem. Now if I click on one of the batches without control or shift, so just using the left mouse button, you can see there are two little icons that appear on the right of it. If you click on the top one, you can turn on or off the subsequent stages in the product's life cycle like this. Or the bottom icon will bring up a list of all the SAP Business One and Computech Process Force documents associated with the batch. So everything from quality control tests to manufacturing orders. And then again, using the yellow arrows, you can open those documents in SAP Business One too. And you can also use this search function here to search the graph for specific things that you want to view. Now, Sometimes you'll be looking at quite a number of batches within a short period of time and so that you can flip back and forward between them easily we have a trace history function. It's just here on the top right and when I click on it I get a list of the batches I've looked at recently and that will be added to as you go along so it makes navigation a lot easier. Then finally we have the action section. When we go here, we get a list of all products affected by this batch. We can select some or all of these and then click on change status, which will bring up a dialogue which allows us to change batch status of those selected batches. And that will be updated in your SAP Business One database too. So if you do have a defect or flaw or contamination in a batch, and you don't want anything from that batch to be used in production or sent out to your customers, you can just change the status from here in a couple of seconds and done.